We now welcome in on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline via Skype, longtime friend of uh, this duo here in Studio B. His name is Adam Law, former BYU baseball standout, minor league baseball standout. Adam, it's always nice to talk with a guy who helped Jeremy and I begin the broadcasting madness with big time plays on the airwaves of iProvo. Indeed, it's great to be here. We were we were watching family videos over Christmas and to see the suits and the shirts and ties that you guys were wearing to those games back in 2007 and eight were epic. <laughs> it was so bad. Okay. One time I tried to appease both fan bases when Provo played Tim Few. So to, to be we had our own Wayne's world show, if you will, sports Valley yes. It was on iProvo local cable access, Provo and Tim Few sports. Adam was at Provo Bronson Kafusi and the guys were over at Tim Few, the bills, but you know, it was awesome. So one time to a Provo Tim Few uh, game, I wore a, green orange shirt with a green tie thinking i would appease both <laughs> both fan bases were ticked <laughs> they were so mad that i would wear the other's color oh my gosh Th those are some fun times though and adam it was odd oddly enough there were a ton of byu guys during that era a lot of byu guys for all sorts of sports too so it was fun to go to the next level and see everybody on campus uh, at byu how much contact do you keep with your old uh, high school running makes, guys like uh, Brandon Davies and Kyle Collinsworth and Chris Collinsworth, for that matter? Yeah, we keep in, we keep in contact here and there with how people move throughout the world and the country. Our best way to keep in contact is via social media, for sure. Uh, but then Chris Collinsworth and I, we still keep in pretty regular contact and keeping up on each other's families and, and what we're doing. We're really lucky to have had great years at Provo High and to see the success of so many of my teammates has been awesome. You've been in the news. We'll talk about that in a second uh, related to N95 masks, but I do want to relive a play, and I think we did the last time you were on. It's just too good to not, right? So Provo wins the state title, and Lone Peak wins the state title. You guys play each other early in the season. It might have been the first game. Um, you make the game-winning shot in this. There are two uh, NBA players on the, on the floor there, but you're the one that gets the ball, right? Brandon Davies and Kyle Collinsworth end up going to the NBA. Describe to us what happened for you to take down Tyler Haas and Lone Peak. Um, yeah, I remember Coach Drury, our coach at the time, had drawn up a, up a play to get Kyle and Brandon on a pick and roll. And Lone Peak came out and really face guarded those guys. And so I was kind of the outlet man slash last resort. And the inbounds pass came to me probably 30 feet away, and I just let it fly. And there's a good picture that I always like to bug Tyler about of him with his hand up. And I just made it rain and we won the game, which was which was really cool. It was a kind of a big rivalry uh, between the two of us. We were obviously the best two teams in the state and how I got the shot. Who knows? But I'm just happy that it went in. That's for sure. <laughs> Great stuff. Uh, we're going to need you to tweet that picture out today so that we can circulate that again just for Tyler Haas. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Law with us on BYU Sports Station. Adam, as Jerem mentioned, you were very much uh, not standing on the sidelines in the fight against this world pandemic. Uh, you have received some very well-deserved notoriety uh, in the media for what you're doing to help produce N95 masks. And for those that aren't familiar with an N95 mask, is it's, those are the ones that help health workers and help people stay safe as they work to fight this pandemic. So why did you feel like you wanted to get so involved uh, specifically producing N95 masks, and how did you do it? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so my brother owns and operates a dental and orthodontic supply company. And two, three weeks ago, he was hearing of the shortages of PPE supplies, personal protective equipment. And he wanted to leverage his knowledge and his expertise in manufacturing things out of China with his trusted factories, which he does for the dental and orthodontic sector, but instead see if he could put a dent in what was happening in the US and now in the world. And so he put his operation on kind of pause and started sourcing these PPE materials and was having a real difficult time getting them into hospitals and those who need them most. And so he reached out to his family members via a Zoom phone call one night and just said, does anybody have any connections? We've got these supplies, but we can't get them in, in with people. And so 
all of my siblings and I, my parents, we made phone calls. Um, I took to Twitter and Instagram and have had a few things kind of blow up and we've gotten a ton of support, a ton of people who need them and we're able to set them up with, with what they need. This has been awesome because we've seen lots of people rally to the cause. You're one of them, um, and you've been very vocal on Twitter, which has been awesome. What's the reaction been like? What kind of success have you seen as you've tried to uh, help out in the cause here? Um, man, so so much success and really some heart-wrenching stories. We've had emails or direct messages from healthcare profession from the children of healthcare professionals saying, "We worry to send my mom or father." into the hospital because they're rationing the masks and the face shields that they have. And so can you please just send us out uh, some few things and, and that, and then we've had hospital administrators on the other side saying, we don't have materials. Can you send us hundreds of thousands of, of supplies? And so it's been really cool to support uh, the big dogs, people who need it the most, and then also individuals coming from their families amazing stories uh what kind of feedback are you getting from them in terms of uh the impact that it's making in these hospitals and, and these care centers worldwide uh you know people right as they place the order they want to know their tracking number and when it's going to get there because the need is just so great but when the supplies have been delivered we've had follow-up emails thanking us for uh, what we're doing and really it's it's my brother who put his normal business on pause in order to help other people. And it's been great to see him in the example that he's been to me and so many other people about catering to the individual as well as catering to the masses who are in need also. That's, that's great work. Absolutely. Um, you, you also mentioned uh, in jest uh, a day ago, um, you're carrying uh, a few different types. You do not carry the model shown in the picture below. Uh, it's a jock strap uh, that is probably your dad's from when you were little, right? The original N95. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, brothers, with free time on Saturdays, you just don't know what you're going to get into. And my mom snapped that picture, and we recirculated amongst ourselves. And I, <laughs> I thought that, that was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen that. Uh, yeah, we'll make sure that people see that as well as the shot we, you hit against Tyler Hawes. We do not recommend doing that yeah. now. We recommend using actual N95 masks. Yes, absolutely. True. Now, Adam, what's crazy about all of this is you're holding down a full-time job, and you're, you're trying to do all, all of this uh, coronavirus fighting uh, amidst just living your normal life. So how are you balancing your schedule, and what are you up to now uh, after baseball? Yeah, so uh, I've taken a position with the Los Angeles Dodgers. I'm involved with some international development in their player department and uh, do a lot with um, – practice planning, skill development, uh, those types of things. And so given with that MLB is shut down right now, not only are we trying to uh, kind of get ahead of everybody else through personal development or professional development, uh, refining our processes on how we go about things, but also now trying to juggle uh, the whole PPE thing and, and getting masks into the hands of those who need the most has been it's been a bit of a challenge but luckily on the on the bright side baseball no games are being played and so I'm able to to kind of have two windows open at a time doing my job with the Dodgers as well as trying to fulfill orders and get the word out about what we're doing it's good to hear that you're still in the game and still working there, which is awesome. I'm still bummed that last year, right before spring training, come on, right before spring training, my Mariners cut you because we hung out at spring training, which was really fun. So I'm, I'm still mad a year later, Adam. I want you to know that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And you, is your dad still working in uh, baseball as well? He is. He's with the Cleveland Indians, and he's a bench coach for one of their minor league teams located in Lake County. Oh, awesome. And how's, uh, how's Grandpa Vern doing? Grandpa Vern's doing great. He just barely turned 90 Woo! and is strong and shoveling walks, sweeping, doing gardening and everything. He's doing great. It's pretty cool to see a Cy Young winner on the front row of every BYU women's basketball game. Uh, awesome. I, I love it. They, they are great. ultimate BYU fans. <laughs> they are. They're great. Adam, uh, we love to tell the story. It's an incredible work that you're doing, and we know you're busy uh, traveling internationally, working for the Dodgers. So safe travels. 
Uh, stay healthy, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Awesome. Thanks, boys. Thanks for having me. It's great to see you guys. You got it, man. Adam Law on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how.